Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a fabulous day. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, today I get to share with you a very special collection over at the Spellbinder shop. This collection is called Sweet Street and it's special because extra special I should say there's a lot of beautiful collections at Spellbinders but this one's dear to me because I am the creator of it um, last year Spellbinders approached me and asked me if I wanted to design um, a collection for them and I first I was flabbergasted I was like what me <laughs> and then I was like yes of course I knew exactly what I wanted um, and this is a die set called the sweet treat box and it kind of started the collection um, and everything to go with it. This is actually a bakery box that you can add a window to, but you don't have to, but it opens and closes. There's a hinge on there and it's meant to pop up on your card projects to where you could fill it with some sweet goodies or you could fill it with a gift card. But um, that is called the sweet treat box. Um, the sweet street collection, let me tell you, let me talk a little bit. Usually I don't talk during my videos, but I, but I'll, I'll share with you a little bit about the collection. Um, me and my husband owned a bakery. We've owned it since um, 2007. Well, when COVID hit last year, um, things changed a whole lot in the Smith family. Um, Spellbinders, in the middle of the year, Spellbinders asked me if I would like to do this collection and I had already started it when our bakery was open, but we had to close it because of COVID, um, we couldn't survive. Um, uh, I'm not gonna go into details about that, but we had to close our bakery. And so this collection actually was an outlet for me because I'm so used to do, go, go, going and do, do, doing <laughs> that um, I just dived right in to this collection. And so I was very blessed that Spellbinders invited me to do this. So they are kind of, um, well, uh, truly a blessing. They're a wonderful company and I, I really enjoyed working with them. Um, but Sweet Street has six die sets in it and um, they're all sweet based because I am a baker and I love my sweets. There are cupcakes and cookies and sprinkles and there's cakes in here and all, almost all of them have little surprise elements that will just make you smile and it's kind of unexpected smile I like to say some of them open some of them pull some of them pop up it's just a fun collection and I'm so excited I get to share them with you so I'm gonna quit rambling and I'm gonna share with you everything that's here and then we're gonna create a project now there there are a few videos out there spellbinders I know Kim Kesty of spellbinders she did a fabulous video using the layer kick surprise die set I'll show you that in just a minute. But if you're done with this video and you wanna head on over there, they have a couple of videos um, with some street street projects. I know they had even, um, I had created a project kit for Spellbinders. It did sell out, that's why I don't mention it. But um, there's some inspiration with a few other die sets with, um, with the project kit if you wanna check that video out too. But let's quit talking and get to sharing the collection. Um, we're going to start off with the Sweet Street box. This box um, is meant to hold cookies or sweets. Um, I actually had created some projects for the project kit, like I had said earlier. This is one of them, um, kind of a rough draft. <laughs> I use foam squares instead of my phone tape, so excuse that. But this is basically what um, what, what what you can create in, in the project kit. But this is a bakery box that doesn't have the window. It just has the uh, Sweet Confections label and banner set, which is my second die set. It's four pieces that layer on top of the bakery box. But the nice thing about this is, is you don't have to layer it. It looked pretty on a card on its own. But um, yeah, there is an embossed um, plate that you can insert into the label. Um, actually, the yeah, the label. Um, and it gives the vertical embossed detail which is really nice but you don't need it if you if you don't want it you don't have to inlay the the embossed plate this here is called the party cupcake pocket and it is looks like a regular cupcake but the neat thing is is the cupcake liner is a pocket so you can pull out your cupcake and have a message on the inside and I think that's super fun. There's a lot of little elements that you can use to decorate your cupcake um, including the frosting 
but there's a little tag that you can stamp a sentiment on and add to your cupcake there is a candle for birthdays there is a cherry a stem and some leaves and a flower um and the cherry actually can be a blueberry too because the stem is not attached so you can add the leaves separately and create a blueberry with that so lots of different options for toppings for your cupcake now this here is called the sweet shop I wanted to show you with you just a little process of it this is my original sketch I thought would be fun for a card um, and it's so amazing seeing it to come to life guys I it just it's 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 very very humbling <laughs> um, but that's the sweet shop guys there's a lot of little bakery elements that you can put in the window this is the layer cake surprise that Kim Kesty created a video with this is the eight piece die set but there's three embossed layers and a very thick frosting layer the frosting's thick because the second and third layer of this cake can um, recline or descend down into the main base cake and so when you pull on it um, you can add the pull to the tag but when you pull on it the cakes ascend and you can see all three layers <laughs> kind of a surprise now this is the cookie corner these are my little cookie sketches and the cookie corner is neat because they are great to create all kinds of sorts of different cookies but you can see on the packaging that six cookies will fit inside of your bakery box actually that you can create a window with it with the sweet treat box there um, and that's what the packaging shows but you can fit six of those cookies um, inside your little sweet box for this project I actually layered four of them together I like to double up in the layers there is a base layer and then the rest of them are inserts there is also an insert that's an embossed um, insert that I used here it kind of creates like an, an uh, embossed shape like an Oreo that's what I was going for with this card um, the crumbs on this card are actually the chocolate chip uh, negative pieces I thought instead of throwing those away we'll use them as crumbs <laughs> so that worked out really good and the bite mark on there is just adorable now I also have a stamp set it's a 4x4 stamp set it's called sugar coated sentiments now this has a lot of sweet sentiments in here that will fit on each one of um, the sweet street collection dies now the tag if there's the sentiment that will fit in there sentiment will fit in the banner there's a couple of them actually that will fit in the banner um in your sweet treat box there's our there's a die cut sentiment that says you are sweet also i forgot to mention that but all of these sentiments in the stamp set will fit on elements of each one of these dies which makes it really nice like the circle that says sweet things that will fit on the tag here and it also fit on your circle uh, banner which makes it really nice along with make a wish I think make any of the elements that have candles I think make a wish will fit with it so it makes it nice but there's also a little pull I'm showing um, the pull will help the recipient know that there is a little um, a little uh, kinetic motion to the card so <laughs> now last but not least are the sprinkles and these are look so delicious but please guys keep these away from children because they do look real um, but they're in little glass bottles with cork tops and there's two different types of sprinkles that work perfectly for this collection you can decorate your frosting you can decorate the cupcake frosting cookies um, and sky is the limit you can even make a shaker card with that uh, sweet treat box with your little sprinkles so this is the sweet street collection i am very long-winded and i hope you guys are bearing with me um i did before i go i do i'm not going to go just yet i'm actually going to create a project <laughs> but i want to share with you the catalog there's four cards in there that i created for the catalog and i'm going to actually create those um in future videos but this is the entire sweet street collection and i think it looks so pretty inside the catalog but if you guys want a great inspirational book this catalog is only five dollars at the spellbinder shop i'll link it down below but it has all the brand new collections all the new tools and gadgets and you know what guys it is this is actually the the new embossing folders and the cards that i had created earlier um that are in there but there's some easter there is there's Yana's new collection in here. There's the Essentials, the Simply Perfect collection. There's some beautiful florals, but um, it's just a nice inspirational catalog for, for, 
for very inexpensive. I thought I would share that with you. Okay, boy, this is gonna be a long video, but we're jumping into our card. I'm gonna go ahead and take my die set. I already have one opened along with a well-loved stamp set. I've been using this um, quite a bit, so I'm gonna use the ones that I have versus the one in the package. But I'm gonna go ahead and take some pattern paper here. This is from a six by six paper pad. I'm not sure if Spellbinder still has this paper pad. If they do, it will be listed below. But um, I like the stripes on here. There's pink and there's red. There's two different shades of red and then there's a gray diagonal stripe. And I'm kind of going for a soda shop look. And I think this is gonna be a great background. So I'm just trimming this down so I have a little bit of border on my card base. And then we're gonna grab our card base, which is a standard A2 size card base. We're gonna go ahead and adhere this panel to the front of our card base. Just add some adhesive behind it. For, for our card today, we're using the Party Cupcake Pocket. I don't think I mentioned that. And I think I'm gonna trim this down a little bit more. I'm gonna take a quarter inch off. I wanted a little bit more of a white border on my card base. So we're just taking a quarter inch off the top and off the side carefully because I do have adhesive behind here and I'm afraid it's gonna stick to my trimmer. <laughs> I wanna add this and then this is our background and we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna do some die cutting. The cardstock that I'm using today is the new Spellbinders um, Color Essentials um, cardstock. It is fabulous. I'm not sure of the names, but I'll list them down below. Um, this is your cupcake pocket. With the white cardstock, I'm gonna die cut out two of those. I'm gonna take the tag, this little swirly piece, and we're gonna do a little die cutting with the white. Now I have pink and brown cardstock. If you hear bells in, in the background, we have new colors for the kitties and they all have, we have three kitties and they all have bells. So <laughs> it's not Christmas, it's just the, the bells on the, their collars. Okay, I'm gonna, the base cupcake is gonna be red cardstock. I'm gonna take the cherry stem, die cut that out too with the brown cardstock. And I'm also gonna take the little swirly and the cupcake liner and die cut out that with brown cardstock as well. Um, we're gonna make a little bit of room and bring in some colored cardstock for the cherries. For the, our embellishing on this cupcake, we're gonna make two cherries, one pink cherry and one light red cherry. So we'll grab our, our cardstock here and then two different shades of green cardstock for the leaves. It's nice because the leaves are separate, separate in this die set um, and they're two different sizes. The, cher the cherries are nice too because they're complete circles. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean with that in just a minute. But um, the cherries can actually be blueberries too because the stem is separated. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit more die cutting again with the brown. And then we'll die cut out our cupcake. And then we'll also die cut out our little cherry pieces. Two of each of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the frosting. The frosting does have embossed detail. It just highlights it and makes it look a little more dimensional. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue behind it and then we're directly add this to our cupcake. Um, I'm using red, but really you could use any color that you want. Um, but I think red's gonna look really good with our kind of a soda fountain theme. And I think that looks adorable. <laughs> okay. We're gonna set this aside and I'm gonna show you the cupcake pocket. I die cut out two because I wanted to show you the different options on how to create your pocket. I'm actually gonna show you three. The first option is just die cutting one out, reinforcing the score lines on the left and the right and the very bottom. You just fold it in. You could use a bone folder if you want, um, but I suggest folding in the left and right first and then folding up the bottom last and then adding glue to those surfaces and then you can tack it down to your project. Um, just flip it over. Now this, um, I say at the very, flip over the bottom piece last because you don't want anything obstructing um, the in and out of your cupcake. So um, that's one option. Option number two is what you're gonna do with your second die cup li liner. You're just gonna reinforce those score lines, top, bottom, and left and right. Actually, you don't want, there's none on top. <laughs> it kind of went crazy with that. Just the left and right and bottom. And then you layer them both together. It kind of creates like a french fry box. 
that's a cupcake liner basically. And then you can insert your cupcake this way. Then you can just glue the back side um, of your cupcake. Of course, you're going to glue your top model uh, or your left, right, and bottom to to connect those two liners together. But you just glue the back to secure that to your project. So that's another option. Now, option number three is my favorite um, for for two reasons because it's it's flat, but it um, but I can also pop it up. What you do is you take the second cupcake liner that you die cut. You're going to trim out the score from the score line there. You can see, and this way you can insert it on the inside of your cupcake. You're going to flatten the edges of your scored cupcake, add some glue or adhesive, and then you're going to fold those. Actually, I'm going to have to um, trim down that bottom area a little bit more. You'll be able to tell if, you, if it folds over nicely or not, but I'm going to fold in the left, fold in the right, and fold up the bottom. It doesn't matter how you fold this one because it's going to be on the back side and nothing is obstructing the cupcake. So this is my favorite because your cupcake will slide in and out, but it, it fits pretty snug and, it, and it's pretty flat. So if you don't want a lot of dimension on your cards for mailing, that's another option here. But um, your cupcake actually slides in securely, and if you flip it over, it stays. It doesn't come out until you pull it out. That's the nice thing, too. Plus, you have that full flat surface on the back side to add um, foam tape, which we're going to do for our card today. So that's my favorite option on how to create um, the cupcake pocket. Now, I die cut out a brown one because I wanted to show you how to put stripes really easily on your cupcake liner. Um, I'm taking the brown liner, I'm trimming off the left and right at the score line, and then on the bottom score line, I'm just going to fold it in. Okay, then I'm going to take my scissors and on each one of the scored detail lines on that cupcake liner, I am going to trim it. And basically, what we're creating are like matchsticks, but when I trim it, I'm going to go below, make sure my scissor or cut line is going below that score, more, uh, score mark on the very bottom. This is going to make it easier to trim the bottom um, when you adhere this to your cupcake liner. But it's easy to follow those score line details. On the camera, it's hard to see them, but in real life, um, your scissors will just line up to them very easily. But they look like matches, you see here? I'm going to lay it fl on a flat surface and kind of reshape the front of my cupcake liner here. And then I'm going to take my cupcake liner and then I'm going to add glue alternating at every score mark on that cupcake liner. So every other line I'm going to add a line of glue to. And not too much. You don't want it oozing out. You just need a little bit. Okay, and it ends up being glue on the very front, glue on the very back, and then alternating in between. Then you take your little matchbook that you created and line it up. Basically, start on the left edge and just flatten it down, hold down those matchsticks. Some of them want to curl under the others, but that's no big deal. You just spread them out. And then what you do next is you just fold them down like a match. You fold it, they fold down easy because there's no glue behind it. Well, that one's tacked a little bit, but you just fold them down and it creates easy peasy stripes. You could do this with any color of cardstock. I think pink cardstock would be adorable. Um, I actually had a little too much glue and it oozed out, picked up some of that paper. So I used my tweezers to scrape off that brown paper. <laughs> but there's your stripes. Pretty easy, huh? Now, you, you cut below that score line so your scissors would be easy to trim off. Now you can trim them off and then fold it under if you want. But rather than do that, I'll just take my scissors, flip it around, and just trim off that bottom edge. So now I have some brown and white stripes on my liner that were pretty easy to do. And then you can put your cupcake in and it looks so adorable. <laughs> okay. We're going to pick, clean up our little match sticks and set these aside. You can keep them, but um, I think we'll just toss them because I think it would be very difficult finding, um, since they're separated, finding a home on another cupcake liner. 
I'm going to take the white swirly. The nice thing about the swirly is the size, guys. You can loop them together to actually create a um, long swirly line for an embellishment. You can put them on the outside of your cupcake liner, or you could put it on the inside of your cupcake, or on top of it. So lots of options with this little swirly. I'm putting it on the outside of my cupcake liner and a little bit lower. If you were to raise it up, you wouldn't have to trim off that excess. But I wanted it lower because I want to make a continu continuous line on my card today. I'm going to grab my other um, brown swirly there. Now we're going to create our cherries. Cherries are easy to do. I die cut out two of each because we're going to um, add opposite colors to each one. Now there is a little detail piece that pops out. You can see that um, on each one of those cherries. Now to fill it in, all you do is die cut out an extra piece and then put one behind it. You just want to make sure that that detail piece is not lining up with the detail piece behind um, the cherry. This is easy because they're complete circles. I'm offsetting mine because I like that look, but you don't have to do that. But you can see that it just highlights those little detail pieces. So layering, die cutting two out um, and layering them is super easy. Now, at this point, if you want to make blueberries, you could. Two different shades of blue would be perfect. Um, and then add some, some of the leaves. But to make cherries, you add the stem to each one of your berries. And then you're going to go ahead and add leaves to the top of the stems. When you die cut out the leaves, it'll die cut out two different sizes. Um, I add glue at the large one and then add the opposite color um, on the very bottom of it. Then I add a dot of glue at the very top, and then I can add the leaves. The nice thing about the, the stems being separate is you can arrange the leaves um, however you want. You can put them to the right or to the left. Both of mine are to the right, but one's a little bit more at a horizontal angle than the other. So lots of options with that. I'm going to use my glue and go ahead and add them to my frosting. We'll add the red one first, and then we're going to add a little more glue. Um, and then we'll add our pink one right on top. And then that is our cupcake. Now I'm adding quite a bit of glue because um, if you want the recipient to pull it out you, and they pull out with the cherry, of course you want it to be, you don't want your cherries to flop off. <laughs> so lots of glue for, it, for your little toppings, I suggest. Now we're gonna use the sugar-coated sentiment stamp set to stamp our sentiment. Um, I'm going to be using, I was debating Make-A-Wish, but I think Make-A-Wish is more for the candle. There is a candle option in the Party Cupcake Pocket die set. Um, and so Make-A-Wish would go perfect on that tag for, for, for that. But I think we're going to stamp your sweet. Um, that's nice because the sweet um, is color inable, so you can add a little highlight of color to that. Um, I think I'm also going to stamp um, a message on the inside of my cupcake with the sentiment in the stamp set that says, Hello, sweet friend. So I stamped my sweet, um, your sweet with brown ink. It's actually a hazelnut blend. And then for my cupcake, I'm going to stamp with Versafine Onyx Black ink. So it just stands out. And it fits perfectly on there, guys. So that's our little hidden message inside the cupcake. Now, if you wanted to add the pull on top of your frosting, you could, um, or even fit it on a cherry, you could, but I'm just gonna leave it blank for today. Okay, I do have an eyelet we'll eventually add to our tag because I like that finished look, but we're gonna finish our card first. We're gonna take some pattern paper. This is from a 12 by 12 paper pad. And I'm not sure if Spellbinder still has it. I know some of their 12 by 12 paper pads are gonna be discontinuing. So this is called the Good Life Prints and it's the wood grain pattern that's in there. I just trimmed it down and then I want a scalloped edge on the very bottom of it. So I'm using the decorative um, edges, the stacked decorative edges die set. It has a real small scalloped. I die cut that out with white cardstock. We're gonna adhere our wood grain paper to the uh, or our scallop to the bottom of our wood grain paper and then I'm going to trim the left and the right so it lines up with my pattern paper on my card base. Okay we're going to do a little bit of arranging. I'm not sure of the placement where I'm going to add my chocolate swirls 
but I want it to be continuous from the white swirl on the cupcake. So I'm just kind of playing around with the placement. And I think about a half of an inch from the bottom is going to work out great. So we're going to flip these over. I'm going to add glue. And we'll just add little dots. This glue is lovely. Have you, I don't know if you guys have tried the Spellbinders Barely Art glue, but um, they have just started carrying it, the Spellbinder Shop, and it's pretty fabulous stuff. I'm going to add our second one. Now there's going to be a little bit of gap. You can um, link these together, guys, but since we're going to cover this with a cupcake, I'm just going to use two. So, and I think that looks great. <sighs> Now we're gonna go ahead and add our tape behind this panel, place it on our card base, just about half inch from the bottom. And then I'm gonna add my eyelet. I wish I had a white larger eyelet, I ran out. So I used a warm gray colored eyelet. So I'm gonna grab my W1 marker and I'm gonna fill in that sweet sentiment um, with that and then I'm gonna add some whipped cream twine um, through my eyelet and I'm not going to tie a bow just yet only because I like to tie the bows it's easier for me to tie it when it's it's adhered to my project but let's grab that marker and fill in the letters S-W-E-E-T and I think this gray kind of um, coordinates real good with again that eyelet okay now our cupcake is all good to go. We can flip it over and add foam adhesive behind it and line it up to those swirlies down there. And I think that's a great place for it. And then you can just pull it out and have that little message in there. And I need my glasses because I can't find the cupcake pocket there. Okay, looks fabulous. We're gonna pop over, <coughs> excuse me, flip over our sentiment tag and we will add a foam square and tack that down and then tie a bow, just trimming off the tails here. And I think that just looks fabulous. Now, last but not least, I'm using my Journey Glaze. I'm gonna add a little shine and dimension to each one of my cherries. And then that is my project today, guys, using the Party Cupcake Pocket die set. It's a 13 piece die set super fun. It's linked down below. Actually, I'll link all of the collection down below, but this one will be at the top if you guys want to check it out. It's available now over at the Spellbinder shop. But thank you so much for joining me, guys. Thanks for bearing with my jibber-jabber, and we will see you again real soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.